Hi everybody, how are you? It's Leslie from Leslie's Creative Studio and welcome to my creative year for June 2019. And thank goodness it's finally summer, kind of. Uh, it's supposed to be summer. We've had nothing but rain. So we haven't been able to be outside and enjoy as much as we would like the beautiful weather because it's been anything but beautiful. <laughs> I digress as usual. Anyway, the prompt for this month for my creative year is passion. And I had to really think about this because I'm passionate about so many things. And it really um, caused me to reflect inward um, about my passion. And my passion is children of all ages, from newborns to my own children who are now adults. And, well, they're supposed to be adults. <laughs> In mom's eyes, they will always be kids. But anyway, um, passion and kids. Um, yeah, this is a this is a tough one in some regards. First of all, I guess let's start out on the happy side of it. Um, passion for children. Uh, when we lived back in Ohio. I was very passionate about being involved in my children's education. And I don't mean necessarily that I was in their classroom. Yes, I have always worked in the same schools, same school corporation that my children attended, but it also happened to be the same school corporation that I attended, me over here. Yep, up here, me. So my poor boys, um, yeah, it, didn't matter. You know, their teachers were either teachers that I had or were kids that I went to high school with who had come back to teach. <laughs> they couldn't get away with squat. <laughs> um, and they were usually pretty good kids. Uh, for the most part, very little trouble with them growing up. They were, they were really pretty good kids. Um, so, but what I would do is I actually got involved a lot with the school board uh, city council. Um, so yes, I was active politically um, in in the uh, in the educational process, but I kind of took it a step further. I was very active in passing um, legislation within the city about getting funding for schools and writing letters to. Uh, our political leaders and speaking in front of many people about um, the importance of funding our schools. So that was a passion to make sure that not just my children, but all children um, receive the proper education that they deserved, which leads me to my next passion of children. And that's working with kids with special needs. And making sure that they got the education that they deserve. Very passionate about that. Um, and that is something that I passed on to my, to my children. Um, both of my boys have always uh, volunteered time in classrooms that I worked in with. And, you know, and it didn't matter whether it was a classroom with kids with um, severe disabilities or kids that were mild in their cognitive disabilities. I made sure that my boys were um, exposed to both, that they spent time in there, that they saw that these kids were just as, as deserving as they were. And I was very passionate about that. And the other thing that I feel very passionate about is being an advocate. I'm an advocate for kids who don't have a voice. And a lot of times people take advantage of that. People take advantage of them because they feel that just because their vocal cords may not work does not mean they do not have a voice. There are many other ways to communicate. Um, and I'm very proud to say that my son, 
my oldest son is now a special ed teacher. And yes, in the same school corporation that I work for. <laughs> but we're not in the same building. We were in the same building for our, quite a few years, but I moved on down to a, a an elementary school. He's still back at the high school. But then not only did I get to impart that passion onto my children, I then got to impart my passion for that to my grandchildren. And I'm going to tell you a little story at the end of the video uh, because it's about a young man whose name is Gavin. And Gavin will forever be a, a, um, a part of the McGrath household, the McGrath family. His parents will always be two people that my husband and I admire greatly. And his brother and sister will always be two young people that I admire for their strength and for their, um, I'm sorry. They will always be two kids that loved their brother with, with deep, with deep, deep, deep love. And, um, just a, the whole family. We lost Gavin back in, um, back in May. And, um, it was very hard because I was always very passionate about making sure that Gavin always got everything that he deserved. I treated Gavin like he was my own son. I treated Gavin as if how I would want one of my children to be treated if he, they, if they had had a severe cognitive disability and, um, Sorry, a little difficult, um, but it needs to be said. Um, when I spoke at his funeral, the one thing that I said is that Gavin taught us more than we could ever teach him. And there's two really important things that he taught us. And I made sure that my granddaughters learned this to their core. Sometimes legs are wheels and sometimes we speak with our eyes and not with our mouth. We need to pay attention. We need to be an advocate. We need to stand up for kids to make sure they get all that they deserve to the best of our ability as adults. Whether you're a parent, whether you're a teacher, whether you're a neighbor, whether you're an aunt, whether you're an uncle, whether you're a grandmother, a great grandmother, um, you have a responsibility. Your responsibility to kids does not end when your child turns 18 and goes off to college or when your child turns 27 and gets married. Your responsibility does not end. It continues and it continues for a lifetime. Now, those kids have the opportunity, if they choose to walk away, then that's their fault. That's their loss. But you need to do everything you can do to continue to be an advocate. So, now that I've talked on and on here for almost 10 minutes, I apologize. But, like I said, this month is about passion. And I think y'all can pretty much tell right now, this is something I'm really passionate about. And I was born with this passion. I was ridiculed for this passion. But I'm proud of my passion. I will never, ever stop being passionate about kids. And I hope that this video and my project will inspire you 
to be passionate about whatever it is you're passionate about. And number two, I hope that it inspires you to do something creative because that's my other passion is to be creative. So without further, further ado, I just want to show you a few things and then I'm going to put this off to music. These are wings with a heart and the back part of this, I just cut out of the back of a pad of, oops, sorry, nope, I'm sorry, the back out of a pad of paper. Okay, so it's just cardboard. And then the more intricate designs of this wing was cut out of the back of, wrong way, Fruit Loops. Seriously. This stuff is useful. And then I also cut out a small clock. I'm sorry, I saw small lock. So that's what I used. So what I'm going to do is I am going to start working on these. And then what I'll do is I will put this to music. And I need to put a coat of some things on this here to make it crackle. So they'll, I need to get them painted tonight so that they dry overnight. And then we'll work our magic on this. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get started. I'm going to fast forward through the process and I'll see you again on the other side. That is, if you stick with me this long, which you better, you better. <laughs> All right, let me get going.
okay. The weathered wood that I have put on here has dried overnight. It's had about 24 hours to cure. You, you could take a you know, heat gun to it and dry it if you want to, but honestly, I really like to just let to just let it dry on its own. I'm going to move this out of the way. I want to work on this first. I haven't used this in a while. Let me clean this up. I'll be right back. Okay, let's try that again. Whew. Sometimes if you let it sit, it will dry in the cap, and it'll be very difficult to, uh, well, as you saw. <laughs> okay, now the weathered wood has dried, and now I'm just going to take, this is Venetian gold. I'm just going to put a light coat on here. All right, I'm just going to set this over to the side and let it dry. And as I said, as it begins to dry, it should begin to crackle. Okay, this is pretty dry and it has not crackled. Oops. Let's see, it's really not crackled at all. And I'm wondering if that's because I used a metallic paint on top. Who knows? But that's okay. With the black underneath and the Venetian gold on top, it still looks um, rustic. I may add a little bit of black on top there or do something to distress it. But let's see how this works. This is a gray. And this is not metallic. <laughs> I'm just going to kind of go down where... some good fine line crackling going on here. Just remember when you use this, the thicker you put it on, the bigger your crackle is going to be. The thinner you put it on, the thinner your crackle is going to be. When you're working on a smaller piece like this, you really don't want your crackle to be um, too, too large because it, you can see some in here where the crackles are too large and the, too much of the black is showing through. I'll try and touch some of that up later. But, all right, and this is um, paprika red. and I'm not really I'm really not feeling it there is crackle on the wings but it's because this crackled more than this did it just looks really off so I'm going to try and add some texture to my wings to 
set them apart, but yet complement the texture on the heart. See how that crackled beautifully? And it crackled on the wings, but it's very, very fine. I must have got a thicker coat on here than I did on the wings. And it could be because there's um, there's texture on the wings. If you can see, there's that. All right, so here's what I think I'm going to do. Let's try it. This is the main page that everything is going to be glued onto. As you can see, the, weather wood, the weathered wood has dried on here. And the color that I used was the dark, dark turquoise. And you can see the difference here. Okay. This is the sea breeze and this is the dark turquoise. You always want to layer the dark down first so that it when it crackles that's what shows through the crackles but yet you still have the light let's hope this works <laughs> if not well then you know it is what it is let me get this set up okay i think i need a little bit more than that and i think i am going to try and take the heat gun to this as well so that it dries quicker and I'm getting a pretty good dose on here and I'm just going to go for it. a little too bright for me although I think you can see the texture in that it turned out really cool I am going to take a 
some clean gold. Yeah. And I'm putting this on with a baby wipe. dry. I think it turned out fabulous. I keep forgetting where my camera is. That looks nice and vintage and grungy. I love it. And I was able to cut out a sentiment, print it out on my printer. And this has turned out really well. So let's get to doing some gluing. This glue is glitter glue, and I find that it is fabulous. It really holds things down. It dries clear, and it grabs really quick, which is a good thing. This red right about here, right in the middle. So I'm just going to hold this down straight. Yep, it's going to hold this down for a second. Make sure it's got a good grab on it, a good hold on it. I'm not too worried about the white paint, the white blue showing up right through there because it, like I said, it will grab on and it will dry clear. Okay. I think I want this right about here. Okay. I'm going to apply this very liberally because it's pretty thick. All right, that glued on nicely. And now we're going to put our sentiment on here. And I'm going to use Deco Art Medium Matte Medium. If I can open it. Okay. I like to coat the top and the bottom. 
because it seals it. I like my work to be sealed both inside and out. And this is just printed on some deli paper. Now I would suggest sealing something like this before you glue it down, especially if it's an inkjet printer, but this really seems to take it, take the uh, media pretty well. And I'll tell you, I, um, you know, there's lots of, um, mediums that you can, matte mediums that you can buy. I really, really love the deco art, um, matte medium. Very, very cool. All right. I'm going to give that, and it will dry with a bit of a sheen to it. As a matter of fact, you know what? I may go over this whole thing just to seal it and protect it. I'm going to do that real quick. I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, we're done. We are born with passion. Give it wings and watch it fly. I did some outlining and some detailing with um, my Stabilo All pencil as well as a black Posca. Uh, fine tip. This is the ultra fine tip. It's written in Japanese. I can't tell, but it's the ultra fine. I'll, you know, everything that I used in this process will be linked in the description below. And, um, as well as a link to my Etsy or to my, um, my Amazon affiliate. So that way, if there's anything that you see that you would like to purchase, um, you can just click on the link and it'll take you right to my Amazon store. Um, you can use your Prime um, and it helps, you know, helps you get what you need material wise. And it throws a couple of pennies my way to help keep the, keep the content on my YouTube channel free. So anyway, here's a close up. We are born with passion. Give it wings and watch it fly. The one thing I forgot to do. I need to do that now. So I'm going to take my vintage photo. And I'm just going to do the edges here. because that gives it a finished look. Come on now, get that corner all scruffy up. Let's 
So, you know, we're all born with some kind of passion for something. And as parents, I encourage you to um, encourage that passion in your kids, to support them in that. Be passionate. I've always been very passionate. I think sometimes it's kind of discouraged because I don't think people always in my family always quite understood my passion. They do now. And it's cool. But there we go. Okay. Still doesn't put this. I want some more down here. There we go. That's better. Just about. <laughs> you see, I'm never done. Never, ever done. There we go. So here it is. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed my process. Um, I hope that it inspires you to do something creative. I hope it encourages you to follow your passion and um, to really understand that, you know what, I really think that our passion is a gift and I think we need to follow it. I think we need to act upon it um, within reason. <laughs> But I think when, like I said, when we're giving up, when we're given passion, I think it's a gift and we need to use it and we need to encourage it and we need to foster it, not just in ourselves, but in those around us. And speaking of those around us, um, the one thing that I would like to say before I end is number one, Gavin, this is for you. And I will try and insert a photo of myself and Gavin here at the end of the video. Um, but Gavin, this is for you. My passion was for you and um, being your caretaker. And you have your wings and you are flying high, my son. You are flying high. And um, the other thing that I want, I would like to say, as always, Please be kind, be nice. It's really not that difficult. Y'all are making this out harder than it has to be. I y'all need to, everyone needs to just start being nice in any way you can. I mean it. Start being nice. There's no excuse for the nastiness that's going on right now. Be nice. All right. Everybody have a great rest of your week, and I will see you next month with another tutorial from my creative year. Bye, y'all.